Hello, this is Paul Nelson with Western Sport Floors, Wyoming Wood Floors, coming to you today from Missoula, Montana. I am so excited. I am so exciting. I had basic coatings in the house yesterday, Mr. Tim Nathan, Mr. Tim Young. This video that you're gonna see is the best video on the internet today about staining hardwood floors. I don't care if you're a residential guy, I don't care if you're a gym floor guy, I don't even care if you're a homeowner and you wanna know how to do it. This is a video to watch. This is fantastic information. I know it's almost a half an hour long. So sit down, get out the uh, crackers, whatever. Watch this video and learn. You make it a great day. Hello, this is Paul Nelson with Western Sport Floors, Wyoming Wood Floors, coming to you today from Missoula, Montana. I have basic coatings with me today, Mr. Tim Nathan. Hi, Paul. Tim, welcome. Thank Thanks you. for having me. Thank you for making the trip to Missoula, Montana. Glad to be here. Awesome. So you spent 30 years as a contractor. I did. And at some point, you told me you kind of got interested in some products, some stains. I did. Uh, we had an opportunity to talk to a chemist about chemistry. Uh, I got invited to a group and it kind of hooked me. Okay. It was like the teaser that uh, pulled me out of contracting. <laughs> well, all right. And then at some point you got picked up by Basic Coatings, a great company. Yeah, as of recently. So December of 2018, Basic Coatings asked me to join the company. Uh, we then released a, a new technology in a stain world in May of 2019 and here we are. So we're in November of 2019, yep. so six months ago roughly or seven, you guys released these hypertone stains. Yes. And I've been seeing pictures on them on social media, Tim, <laughs> and they look pretty darn it's impressive. An imp it's an impressive product. It's something different, that's for sure. And you'll appreciate, as a contractor, once you have a system in place that works, you're a little slow to change. Oh, absolutely. I was one of those guys. Yeah, yeah. So you appreciate that we don't change easily. Absolutely. <laughs> I'm a big fan that we earn your business. We don't demand yeah, it. Fair enough. Yeah. Uh, at the same time, we have customers, speaking of demanding, that are really demanding. They want specific things and they have every right to. Yeah. They don't want technology from 10 years ago. Well, that's usually why we get called. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I can't achieve this look the customer's asking for. Exactly. So obviously that's a challenge that yeah. we're wanting to rise to. Yeah. So we're I'm up for right it. right there. I've got a design team right now asking me to make a golden pecan stain, mm -hmm. but, but typically we use a oil modified sealer. Sure. There's almost no tone difference between a golden pecan stain and a oil modified sealer on maple. Touch of highlight, that's about it. So we're very interested in what you guys are able to do. Oh, absolutely. Golden pecan's an easy color. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> My struggle is your ease. There, so you, there go. you go. There you go. All right. Well, <clears throat> we're going to move ahead with this video. What you've done so far, have you just done a water pop? Correct. For anybody that's maybe unfamiliar with that, it's pretty simple. Can you explain what a water pop oh, is? Typically water popping opens up the grain of the wood so it accepts the color a little bit deeper and then it allows for penetration of the stain so you can get the color you're looking for. It well, also what can... is water popping? What oh, did you do? I apologize. Yeah. So basically I just took water and I dampened the floor evenly, uh, not leaving any puddles or anything like that on it. I basically just wet the floor in a uniform fashion, allows some grain raise. So we're wetting the floor in a uniform fashion. Yes. It, it, is, it, is it fair to explain it's kind of like mowing the grass? Sort of. It sort of stands up a little bit? Yep. And then it, it, the idea is that that stain can penetrate a little deeper. Well, absolutely. In today's day, we are sanding our floors so much tighter that we're actually burnishing the fibers so tight that stain has difficulty penetrating. Got it. So we're over sanding. In but some that, cases. That's what the customer wants, though. They want a nice splash. Well, not to mention, maple's a difficult wood to sand in and of itself right. not to have those sanding marks show. So you do have to go very smooth in the process. We're just basically backing it up a little bit so the stain can penetrate. Awesome. So we've, we've water popped, yes. meaning a thin coat, dampened that, that entire surface of that wood. Yep. And now we're letting it dry. I've even heard that that isn't necessarily... Not fully. So it isn't even absolutely critical that, that this floor be completely dry from the water pop before you begin... Because it's a water-based stain. Because it's a water-based stain. We're also going to show that sweat doesn't affect the stain either. Sweat doesn't affect it. That is fantastic. 
have to. We've all sweated there on you a go. job. All the time. Sweat, blood, and tears. <laughs> all right, for Western Sport Floors and Wyoming Wood Floors, this is Paul Nelson together with Mr. Tim Nathan. Yes, sir. Basic coatings now. And we are going to do a demonstration on. I just said the name and now it left me. Hypertone stains. Hypertone stains from Basic Coat. There you go. Hypertone, if you guys didn't hear everything we've talked about, is it oil water hybrid technology. So you can see where containers are all plastic because it's water based. Um, it's non combustible, it's non toxic, um, it has next to no odor. Um, I'll have you guys check that out. The other thing about Basic Coatings that we're kind of proud of is. We foil seal our packaging so you know it's as fresh as possible when you receive it that hasn't been disturbed you know darn well it's coming pretty much straight from the plant um, this product does not require anything complicated to mix it this is it pigments can always settle that's the nature of pigments and coatings but you can loosen them up real easily just by this you don't have to put a stick down in there you don't have to break it up you don't do any of that um, stability the product can freeze anything that has water and it can freeze, but the great part is you thaw it fully out, you're good to go. It doesn't matter how many times it's frozen. It'll never hurt it. So I In like- Montana, that's important. Yeah, it is quite important here actually. <laughs> um, for those who don't know what water popping is, we evenly wet the floor with just water. But the other great part about Montana is it's pretty darn dry here too. So it took less than 10 minutes and this floor doesn't even show like we water popped it. So what that's basically doing is give us a little texture. Um, I'm a big fan of working out of a bucket. I like using a roller, a paint pad, or a brush for application. I like using um, terry cloth rags for removing excess product. So I'm virtually just going to put some product in a bucket. I'm a big fan of creating a little bit of a pour spout just because it makes less mess than plopping it out of the jug. I like to show something about this stain to show how easy it is to work with it for cleanliness. And that is simply as we've all gotten stain on our hands, but what we have to do to traditional stains is we now have to go get solvent. With this stain, I can just get some water and I'm cleaning myself up. Now, I still like to wear gloves because I don't like dealing with stopping and starting and having my hands all messy, but the point is, is you can clean this up much easier with this product. When we talk about bleed with stain on raw wood, it's pretty challenging because we know wood fibers are carrying that product. So unfortunately, I can't say that it's not going to bleed at all. I can only tell you that there are some techniques that we can implement that help slow it down and make it much better because that stain's gonna wanna always follow those wood fibers. There's no way around that completely. This product is a lot thicker than what you're used to with an, a traditional stain. Um, so we've been able to have some pretty good success rolling it and not fling product all over the place. So it's really kind of been drawing a lot of conversation because of that speed of application. Um, we don't recommend ragging the stain on and the reason being is uniform saturation is the key to not having lap lines and color inconsistency. So when guys are trying to put it on too thin with a rag like they're used to with their old world products, they're seeing all their swipe marks because the rag is drying out as you're working across that floor because the product is a heavier body product, the rag can't hold it enough. The roller, believe it or not, now then compensates for that. But where guys get frustrated is they assume that when I'm laying it on like this, they're gonna use so much more product. Typical spread rates for other stains might be five, 600 square feet or so per gallon. We're getting eight. Even putting it on with that. Floor. Yes, it looks like you're gonna throw a ton of product on the floor and throw a ton away. But what's different is it's a thicker product that doesn't soak all that solvent down into the wood like you see with traditional stains. This will soak, yes. But a lot of this product I put on stays on top, so it looks like there's a ton of product on there, but you're actually not using as much as you think. We've been doing it over and over and over again, and guys are seeing the same kind of results. Um, to jump right into it, how many guys sweat while they're working on a floor? 
How many guys get nervous when they sweat when they're staining yeah. <laughs> on a floor? I'm going to even go a little step further. That's a pretty aggressive amount of sweat. What would happen with your traditional stain if we did that? You'd have a mess. You would, wouldn't you? Let's see what happens with this, though. So I like using a brush for cutting in my edges. Um, because of that tape line, I'm going to do something a little different there. You'll see in a second. So what I like to do along a tape line is what I call dry roll. So I try to not flood the line. When I flood the line with stain, I'm noticing a lot more bleed issue. So if I can work out some of my excess stain and try and work it a little dry, you can actually hear it. I'm not pushing as much product that can wick underneath that tape line. I was taught, I don't know about you, Paul, that and we were old school. Back in the day, we hand brushed our finishes right. and we did all our stains by hand, but it was always the first wipe, second wipe method was my father's teaching for us. So we just had one guy who would take off the excess and a second guy would come along and get it all evened out after that. You still like that? I like the method. Okay. I don't see any sweat so drips, by the way. A, no, the sweat Are we noticing that? <laughs> And you're not recommending a buffer necessarily. You can buff the stain, but it's a significantly different method than what you're used to. Okay. And I'm starting to say that more and more because some guys are just seeing that. It says, well, that's a lot bigger learning curve than this application. Because mm -hmm. there's still guys who like to lambs wool it on and wipe it off. Okay. And then there's some guys who rag it on and wipe it off with their traditional stains. So this method is not so far different than lambs wooling it on. So we like to teach the basics first. Get to know the product. Okay. Find out its speed, its feel, its uh, viscosity, things like that. And as you get to know it, you get a better understanding of how to deal with buffing it. You can't buff it in with a carpet because it wants to heat it up and add friction and set it up too fast on you. Gotcha. So it's a little different. What we're going to recommend when we do recommend buffing it in, and we have done it, is a thick white pad. It's a little different. Like a towel? No, I like the white polishing pads. Oh, okay. They stay cooler. Okay. You think about it, you got all that air in that. So now I can put this on and I'm going to put it on tighter. That's the difference. And then I can come back with a white pad and I just take the access and work it in. So when you say a white pad, what you're talking about is, this is, I understand this is a red pad. Same concept, but, but white. But you're talking about this pad yep. that's in white. Correct. So it's a little different. So I oftentimes will kind of go a little slow to show um, that lap lines aren't as challenging to deal with. Maple's always the worst wood in my mind. Do we have a vacuum nearby? John, do we have a vacuum nearby? I do want to show something that's kind of intriguing. Okay. We ask the question a lot. How do I know when this, my stain is dry? So how do you test for stain to be dry? Well, you leave it overnight. Okay. It usually is dry overnight. I don't know that I have a test. Okay. So a lot of us know about the white rag test. You've heard of that one, haven't you, Paul? For sure. Okay. So the white rag test tells us what? Well, you wouldn't have any stain coming off of it if it didn't, if it didn't discolor. Pigment's tight to the floor, right? Basically. So my father and, and my brother stumbled across something years ago that I thought was quite interesting. And that was a vacuum test. Okay. We're working on the extension cord. It's okay. Um, oils are a lot more of an issue here than waters, but the places where you're gonna find that stain doesn't dry is mostly between the boards. Sure. Or down in the open grain of species like oak. Sure. Maple a little less so on that issue, but the gaps. I mean, think about it, that's a pocket or a cavity for stain to sit. Mm -hmm. And in many cases, it's almost like putting in a container with a cap on it because you can't get any airflow into it. So, what you got going on? I'm just going to tape off another area. I want to use the, uh, the stain and yeah. the finish. Oh, sure. Yeah, can you turn it on real quick? Yeah. 
So, the vacuum test, I'm looking for gaps. All right, so we can pan down here with the, with the camera. Tim, you're saying that using the vacuum, you're able to suck up some wet stain. I'm very, I'm able to verify if I still got product that's wet in my floor somewhere. That's fabulous. And so you wouldn't want to try and top coat this with no. that product. What happens when we trap solvents underneath finish? <clears throat> Disaster occurs. There's issues with your finish. And then your customer thinks you don't know what you're doing. Yes. And you're a crook. We know in the oh, oil, thanks. in the oil-based world, <laughs> yeah. We have poly beading issues in the water-based world. We have blushing issues. Um, where'd you put that tape roll? Let's rub this. So I like this test. Um, sometimes guys just find something out by dumb luck, but then I like to pass it. You know, my father and my brothers and I, like everybody, has had problems with projects in the past. Sure. And this was one of those ways that we found security in going, okay, we can proceed with this project because we know the product's dry. Right. Or is there, is there, is there a high humidity area? Is there any? So typically why that is occurring is you, you have a either lack of airflow or a poor drying environment because of humidity or cold. So I'm a big proponent when it comes to drying most manufacturers state two conditions for ideal, relative humidity and temperature. I'd like to put a third condition in there. That's air exchange. Because I can be in a job site where we think about solvents. Solvents are heavier than air. So when that product off gases, and I don't care if it's stain, I don't care if it's finish, I don't care what chemistry it is, that product starts to off gas its solvents, and then it raises up and just drops right back down again. So now imagine in a gym where you close all that doors and you just put all that product out there. There's a blanket of solvent gases hanging on the surface of that floor. Let's add another element to it. Dead of summer, now you got humidity. They got all the air conditioning running. What does cold dense air do? It goes down. It drops. So now I got a layer of off gassing solvents and I've got a layer of cold dampened air sitting on the surface of that floor and you let that sit for 24 hours you think it's really drying it doesn't really dry like you think so fresh air exchange would help resolve that so the pockets that we're talking about here oftentimes they're there because that's sitting with all that happening right on its surface that you can't see but it's stopping it from off gassing any further little airflow boom she releases it right away how are our lap lines looking there are no lap lines that I'm able to discern. Well, and that's just it, is a traditional brown color is not as hard to work with. It's usually when I get a call for something really bizarre that it gets more challenging because the more pigment in the product, the more difficult the stain is to work with. And I don't care whose chemistry it is. Mm -hmm. So I like that this stain can do the very traditional all day long, just like you're used to, as reliable as you've been used to, and then when you want to do something more challenging, you adjust a little bit of your procedure, make it happen. Pretty simple. What do you think of the rolling? It's a little different, isn't it? Relatively quick. Um, but you are noticing how much excess it seems like I'm putting on the floor, right? Yes. It looks different, but in the grand scheme, at job after job after job, we're having success by getting 800 square feet per gallon. I'm overlapping properly. I'm re-wetting that edge. I'm able to wipe it thoroughly, get the excess off, control my lap line. The number one rule that I try to tell people is wipe it and wipe it and wipe it. Too many guys think that they have to kind of put it on even or uniform and then they have laps because now it looks inconsistent because they wiped it inconsistently. Just wipe it as thoroughly as you can. You can't over wipe it. Um, yeah, you can't. So my father and I, um, when I was training, used to badger me quite a bit because we did lacquers back in the day. Oh boy! So with lacquers, you had to put it on heavy because it flashed so fast on you, right? Right. So he used to have kind of a funny saying when he was training us boys, put it on like it's cheap. I kind of started to embrace that with this stain now. Okay. Put it on like it's cheap. 
Besides, we make more every day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> got a big fat <laughs> <laughs> that looks fabulous and first of all uh, mr flanagan your sand job is outstanding i can't see a scratch anywhere huh? stain does not hide scratches okay you still got to sand so, the floor so, properly so, so we, we, we got to make sure that we that we say that that it still has to be sanded yes. correctly i've actually been asked that they okay. figure that because it's water based they think it's going to cause grain rays which would hide scratches it's still pigment on wood there are no lap lines there are no swirl marks it's a pretty this, this is in my mind cabinet shop grade stain job it's far more uniform too than what we've been seeing. Incredibly uniform. And I still want to go back to where I dripped all that water on that floor. Absolutely no sign of where you threw all that water on the floor. It's so pretty, pretty wild stuff. It looks to me like you could water pop this thing, turn right around and stain the thing. Fairly close, fairly close. Um, the hard part about water popping is some guys lay it on heavier than others. Right. You don't want any heavy, heavy, heavy puddles. It could make that spot light, it gotcha. could. Um, we gotta also remember that the environment here is so dry. Right. We're off gassing so fast. Correct. That is summertime, it might feel a little different. We were in Arkansas. Might be a different Florida. Thing. Florida. Houston. Houston. There you go. Yeah. But the key is the sweat doesn't affect it. So we're we're talking about Montana, relatively dry spot. If you're yes. in Utah, Arizona, boy, you could water pop that thing and, and be on it fairly quickly. Denver. Go have a crazy. Sandwich. Yes. Back. Yeah. And the beauty of it is, is guys will think, well, it's water-based, it's going to dry too fast, right? For a 100-degree yeah. yeah, day that's a problem. In, yeah. in Kalispell, what are we going to do then? We also make a product called Glide. Okay. It is a retarder for this finish, so we can actually slow it down to help us when we're doing very large gyms in the dead of summer in St. Kalispell or, Absolutely. or whatever. So we, have, we, have a, we do have a way to slow it down. I, you know, it's just depends on what the environment is, but we've got you covered for where, wherever and whenever. Well, are you willing on camera to pull this tape up and show us what sure. the bleed may, um, or may it's, not have been? It's stain on wood. Right. I made no guarantees. Uh -oh. Well, I'll tell you what, <laughs> it's a whole lot better than what we've been doing typically. <laughs> but you notice how I dry rolled along that tape edge. Keep it less so you don't force that bleed in those wood fibers. Um, that's the problem, I think, when guys face a bleed. They put too much product along that right. tape line. So just if we can pan down here, as Tim pointed out, it is not going to be perfect, but I'll tell you what, that is a... Our, our customers will accept that line in, in virtually all cases. We're good. Well, like I said, we, we don't ever guarantee something like that, right. but we do have some tricks that can help with it. For sure. Can we pull those two and take a look at those? Minus the spot I went over the tape. Yeah, I, we've never done that. Okay, so that one did see a little bit more bleed. But that's still a pretty nice line. Do you, do you think the paint roller would help with that? I do. Yeah. I do. Where brushing oftentimes forces more product, it pulls more product, okay. a roller lays it down in a different fashion. And I have found that rolling it doesn't cause as much pooling along a tape line. When the, in the edit process, you can, so you these right here, you know, can, so you can all day long, can go into something like that and you never have to worry about it. Oh, wait a minute, stop. <laughs> we can throw dirty stain rags away and it's not gonna catch the facility on fire? Dumpster, 120 degree temperature, black garbage bag, I don't care. These are not, this is not a flammable product. It's not combustible. Wow. That's good enough. And you guys Hallelujah. notice there's no odor. There's no smell. There is, there is no odor. We are not opening that door because we're all asphyxiating. We're, we're standing in here and there's no odor. It's just, you know, so yeah. So this nice. would be California VOC compliant. It is. Anywhere in the country. Anywhere in the country. It doesn't even cause cancer in California. Oh exactly. my gosh. Wait a minute. Fantastic. Everything caused cancer in California. No, this doesn't even cause cancer in California. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Um, cleanup is kind of nice though too. Excuse me, Tim. Yep. That um, to be able to find any kind of hard surface and wipe the stain up. As simple as that. You get this stain on kinda a wall. Nice. I have a video. If you get it on a wall, you can actually just wipe it right off. It, it'll dry, it'll wipe off of a painted surface if it's flat, if it's just primed, or if it's raw drywall, it's yep. still pigment. Um, but trim, if it's got paint on it, 
um, a vinyl floor outside of the gym that you're working. If someone bumps the bucket, spills. I had a guy shampoo it out of carpet. Oh, wow. Yeah. So the key to it is keep it wet. So the binder can't lock the pigment to the fibers. Gotcha. So when he called me in a panic, I said, keep it wet, keep it wet. And he goes, what do I do? Go get a carpet shampooer. Okay. So we did, got it actually shampooed out of carpet because awesome. he caught it. Thank you for watching this video on staining maple with basic coatings. I understand that there are multiple right ways to do things, but I have never seen a video, and I have looked. I do not believe there's another video on YouTube or on the internet that does as great a job as explaining how to stain a hardwood floor as this video does. There's other right ways. There's other ways that this can be done, but this way with these hypertone stains are the way that a lot of uh, large gymnasium contractors are now staining floors that you're seeing on TV. I hope it helped. If this was of interest to you, please check out our other videos at Western Sport Floors on YouTube or follow us on Facebook at Western Sport Floors. Coming to you from Missoula, Montana. This is Paul Nelson. You make it a great day.